Hey guys, today we are back in the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E. This is the extended range 88 kilowatt hour battery. And it's actually a very similar spec to what we had a few weeks ago from Gene Butman Ford, the dealer. This is just red. So a uh, very nice looking car. And we've spent quite a bit of time in this the last few days, driving it around, put a lot of miles on this Mach-E. I finally have 240 charging installed in my garage. So I've got a pretty good charging solution at home now and uh wanted to give you guys some thoughts on what this mach e is like to live with on a daily basis lots of things to say lots of things to discuss and talk about i also spent quite a bit of time in the tesla model y this week and figured it'd be interesting to talk a little bit about that and compare the two uh, we may do a more in-depth comparison later on this week but for now let's talk mustang mach e so the first thing i like the way this thing looks I know it's a crossover and it's got the Mustang name and if you don't like it, just call it the Mach-E. I don't really care. I'm not necessarily a Mustang loyalist. I know there's some design cues. It would be nice if they didn't make this a crossover and they made it a little bit lighter and a little bit sportier and sleeker and more like a sedan. But hey, we are in 2021 and everyone's want crossovers. So even though this barely has any ground clearance for a crossover, it looks like a crossover and they'll sell it as that and i think that's just you know that was a marketing and sales decision so got that out of the way let's talk about what this thing has been like to live with the big selling point with this maki -E is it's just nice it feels very high quality the interior is surprisingly well made for ford ford's been uh really kind of up in their game lately. We were impressed with the Bronco interior this week, the Bronco Sport interior, that is. And this Mach-E is quite nice as well. I'm really, I do like the way it feels. The materials in here are really well done. You have this contrast white or gray stitching. I don't know what it, what it really is. I'm just turning this around so we can get a slightly better lighting angle on the inside. This screen... Well, okay, let's talk about the screen because that's the first thing you see when you get into here. It's massive. It takes up pretty much all the uh, the real estate here. You've got a few buttons and switches and knobs, but not too much really. The screen is okay. I complained a little bit about this in my initial impressions video. It's a little bit clunky. The uh, organization of everything isn't the best. I think things could be organized slightly better. There are a lot of menus and just a lot of settings, and I think just it could be done better it's also not as responsive as i would like some uh, menus take a while to load um, apple carplay does work quite well though and the bno sound system does sound great we did a sound test in our last video and we probably won't do that again this time there's, there's no point I might play a little bit of music at the end of the video but uh, you guys can get the idea from my previous review the navigation is where i have a little bit of a gripe because this is an electric car. You should be able to really easily find charging stations. And uh, we also have the, uh, the Ford Pass app connected to this car. And that's been really nice to have that experience this week of what it's like to see what the app does too. Because you're gonna be, if you have one of these, you're gonna use the app. Uh, you can lock it, unlock it, start it, you know, preset the temperature, schedule, uh, charging, all that good stuff, see the tire pressures. Um, but the Ford Pass app actually has a really nice map that shows you nearby chargers. So you can swipe down on this menu, hit charging. I don't know why it doesn't just show it to you automatically. And it will take a second and find you all of these nice chargers. These are Electrify America chargers, charge point chargers. It'll tell you uh, the, uh, let's see, will it tell you the kilowatts that it does? Yeah, yeah 30, 32 kilowatt hour um, DC fast charging, five of six are available. Uh, there aren't a lot of really fast chargers in the area, to be honest. This one is, um, tells you the price, which is great. It has a couple photos there. It doesn't necessarily tell you the speed. So, but the app is pretty good. The in-car navigation is completely useless for finding charging stations. Completely useless. Um... I don't really even know how to find something with this app. Uh, there we go. Search. I want, I want to find charging. Fuel stations. Let's find fuel stations. 
all fuel stations. Why, why can I find fuel stations quicker than I can find charging stations in this? What, what is going on here? Um, so, <laughs> I don't know what Ford was thinking with this. Here we go, charging stations, there we go. Why, is, why are fuel stations above charging stations? Okay, so you've got all these charging stations, but most of these are private charging stations in businesses. Um, they're very random. They're only 240. You've got a few charge points in here, and they'll kind of show you where they are. But really, the app is the best solution to find charging solutions or any other third-party app on your phone. But the problem is, is you can't go in on your navigation and just quickly find a charging solution if you're somewhere random outside of your home zone. That's a bit of a problem. Ford needs to work on that and figure that out because the Electrify America network, the non-Tesla network, is tough enough to deal with to begin with, and Forge is making it more difficult to really find charging in this car. That's my probably number one and biggest complaint about the Mach-E. Everything else about this car is pretty darn good. Um, I really like the interior. The way it looks is pretty decent. No complaints there. Let's show you guys the front. There's some cool stuff here. It's a 2X pull for that. Honks all the time. And then you've got some compartments here where you can put stuff. There's a drain hole there. Uh, you can fill this with water, with whatever you want, chicken wings, who knows. Um, so that's nice. Got a little frunk. There we go. You gotta make sure it's closed. Here's your charge port. There we go. Pretty self-explanatory. Nice that you don't have to flip things up. You can just stick the charger right in there. These doors, um, they're a little funky, but they work. Only problem I could see with them is if it's icy and you can't push it in. Back seats have tons of space. They're nice and roomy. And this panoramic sunroof is quite good. It's, it keeps things pretty cool in here, honestly. Direct sunlight, you don't really see a lot of uh, heat come through. Headspace is decent. Attractive interior, feels very modern, feels, feels very cool. This is a really good direction for Ford to go with this new Mach-E. Lots of space in the back here as well. You've got your uh, charge cables, anything else, a little bit of storage underneath. The seats pull, fold pretty flat. Oh, and one of my favorite things, check this out. The turn signal. In classic Mustang fashion, does the little sweep thing to the edge of the car. How cool is that? I love it. Before we hop in and drive this Mustang Mach-E, I would like to thank our sponsor, Phantom Wallet. They've been a great sponsor for the channel and they are now launching the Phantom C, which is an Apple iPhone MagSafe card fanning wallet. It's launching on Kickstarter. You can get in early and back this project until March 24th. This Phantom C is very similar to their other minimalist wallets, but this just magnetizes to the back of your iPhone 12. You can still fan out all of your cards for easy access, and the built-in MagSafe magnets attach to any iPhone 12 or any Apple-certified MagSafe phone cases. This is the smallest and most minimal Phantom wallet ever. It's only eight millimeters thick and still retains RFID and NFC protection. If you guys have been thinking about getting a Phantom Wallet, this one might be a really good way to go. It is their smallest and most compact minimalist wallet yet. Anyway, big thanks to Phantom Wallet for their support of this channel and for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's take this for a drive and talk about what it's like on the road dynamically. Turn the turn signal off there. We'll plug Apple CarPlay in. That is one pro over the Teslas is that this has Apple CarPlay. And if you know me, I like my Apple CarPlay. You can quickly access a few things down here, which is great. So the more you use this system, the better it gets. Really just the charging is just, it's just so tough to find. I do like this rotary gear selector. It's quick. You don't have to look down to operate it. Um, I've got this set to one pedal driving. So that's quite nice to use. You've got your 360 cam, you've got your park assist. Uh, you get a little bonging noise in reverse. Drive.
drive modes. We have a few different drive modes. Engage, Whisper, Unbridled. Let's just let's put it unbridled today, the whole drive. Might as, might as well. And we'll do the propulsion sound too, just for fun. I don't really like it that much. But I'll give you guys something to listen to. I love the way this Mach-E drives. It's really nice. It's a lot quieter inside than the Tesla Model Y. The handling's about on the same, uh, same level. This Mach-E though has skinnier tires. These are only 225 width tires. And this is an almost 5,000 pound crossover electric vehicle. It's heavy. That's a lot of weight on 225 width tires. Um, I know why they did it. It's good, better for efficiency but you might see some tire wear from that. And uh, you know, you get, to, you get a little squirrely around some corners in this Mach-E. It is fun though. I do like skinny tires. <laughs> the steering feels great. The chassis and just the overall tuning is excellent. The brake pedal feels pretty good. It's a little bit touchy. Honestly, I've barely touched the brake pedal all week while driving this thing, so that's not really an issue. All right, we'll turn the propulsion sound off. The one pedal driving in this car is quite good. When you're coming to a complete stop in this Mach-E, it's not super smooth like the Tesla Model Y is, but it's pretty good. There's still a little bit of a jolt at the, at the end of your, your stopping. All right, zero to 60. It's pretty good, it's pretty quick. Performance does fall off a little bit after a, full, a few pulls and the battery gets some heat in it, but for the most part, the Mach-E is quite rapid. There's not a lot of wind noise in this thing. It's a very nice electric car to drive. The ride quality over big bumps is a bit bouncy. I think Ford could improve the suspension tuning on this Mach-E just a bit. Otherwise though, handling, smaller bumps, smaller road imperfections, there's a tad bit of impact noise through the tires, but it's okay. I think it's exacerbated by the fact that the rest of the car is just so quiet. The all-wheel drive puts its power down really well. And there's a lot of grip in this Mach-E. The last time we drove it, it was in the winter. And uh, well, let's just say there wasn't a lot of grip outside. It was pretty snowy, pretty cold, pretty greasy out. And uh, this hooks up. There's a lot of traction here. I am excited to drive a GT. Uh, just for the fact that you can have a little bit more fun in that thing. The traction stability control in this Mach-E is uh, it's pretty invasive. You can turn it off, but it doesn't really do much. Take a couple more corners here. Oh yeah. It's a beautiful chassis. I mean, any electric car with a super low center of gravity, the low mounted battery, everything kind of centrally located in the car is gonna handle great. But I love how quiet it is, it is at speed. We're just cruising here, 60 miles an hour. There's very little wind noise. It's super comfortable. Pretty big difference from the Tesla Model Y. I like the materials. I like the steering wheel. The driving position is nice. I have great visibility. This uh, passenger side mirror is a really wide angle. The blind spot monitoring system works well. The radar guided cruise control is fantastic. And the lane keep assist is even quite good. Ford has always done a good job with those systems. We'll show you those on the highway here shortly, but they do a very nice job. I actually kind of prefer it to Tesla's autopilot because it doesn't bong every time you turn on lane keep assist or steering assist.
Let's talk a little bit about range and charging and driving this Mach-E. So I've probably just put about 40, 50 miles on this since full, since I had 100%, and uh, it's only down to 84%. So range is much improved in warmer weather. Today it's about 40 degrees. It's a little bit warmer than it was last time we drove this. But this is an 88 kilowatt hour battery pack. It takes forever to charge. If you only have 120, forget about it. It's not going to work. You got to have 240 at least with this thing. And, and I only have a 40 amp plug. So this is a 32 amp uh, charger with that comes stock with a Mach-E in the back. Um, but you can upgrade to, you know, the four charger can can do more. And of course, you know, you take it to a, a fast charger. You can do up to, I think, 50 kilowatts with this. So that's something to mention and something to think about. Uh, it's just a big battery. This is a heavy car. It's not that efficient. It has a 0.285 drag coefficient, I believe. And it's almost 5,000 pounds. So not an efficient electric vehicle and uh you know the teslas the porsche taycans they're more efficient and they just cut through the air a little bit cleaner and this mach -E just it kind of it needs this big battery to be usable but i think the projected range at 100 percent charge i'm getting about 220 miles of projected range that seems pretty accurate in this colder weather if we were driving in the city a lot or in warmer temperature, I'm sure we could get a lot closer to that 270 miles of uh, estimated EPA range. A little bit of hard cornering here. Ooh, yes. Just a beautifully balanced chassis. Really nice. you guys the passing power here on the highway. Zoop. It's amazing. All week I've been driving electric cars and between this and the Model Y and then I got into a new Volvo V90 that we have. It's a T6. It's a cross country. Guys, it just felt like a dinosaur. These EVs are so smooth and so seamless and you feel so connected to the inputs because everything is direct and instant. The one pedal driving, the throttle response, everything is, it's very engaging, but in a very different way. And it's very luxurious at the same time. The silence, the lack of vibration and NVH is very, very nice. And you get used to it and you get back into a, internal combustion engine car and it feels like it's missing something it's it's really it's been interesting living with evs for a week and then going back to a, a very very nice luxury wagon and thinking oh man this feels ancient and i would rather have an ev so i think that's kind of how i can sum this up i don't think these evs are ready for prime time to be your long distance road trip cars. Uh, I don't know if it's even ready to be your only car. Depends on your lifestyle, depends on what you, where you drive, what you drive, how you use your vehicle. Um, but for a runabout in town car or for something that you occasionally take on longer trips, this Mach-E is phenomenal. It's a really good car. The ride's a little bit funky. The infotainment's a little bit sucky, but the rest is very good here. And uh, if you can get over the Mustang thing and you can get past the fact that, you know, this isn't really a Mustang, but it is a Mustang, but people don't want it to be a Mustang, just call it the Mach-E and be done with it. Uh, Ford has made a really nice electric car with this. Um, I would personally swing for the biggest battery in any electric car that you can afford. It just gives you more options and more usability. Uh, so I would get this 88 kilowatt hour battery. It's, it's expensive. This uh, Mach-E starts at just under $50,000. And uh, the, uh, one, this one as spec is, I think, 60,200, including destination. So it's getting up there, but you get a uh, tax credit and that helps. So if you 
qualify for that, you will save some money and it'll be a little bit cheaper than uh, the Tesla, I guess, or similar. And I think it drives a little bit nicer than the Tesla in some respects. The steering isn't as good. I would go drive both. <laughs> yes, beautiful rotation. The handling in this car is just phenomenal. You point and you floor it and it goes there. There's no understeer, there's just a little bit of oversteer. The stability control kind of keeps everything in check, but that's okay. It's a beautiful balance. Just wonderful. Look at that. We'll tiptoe around this M dot van here. And then we'll go for it. <laughs> The acceleration isn't blistering. This is not a Model 3 performance or a Model 3 long range. If you really want performance and driving engagement, I don't think you can beat the Model 3 unless if you get into a Porsche Taycan. Um, this is a nice middle ground. It's usable. I wish there was some more ground clearance. If they're gonna be making this a crossover and they're gonna be kind of marketing it as such, you need more than, I don't know what this is, five and a half inches of ground for clearance, maybe a little bit less. It's not a lot. It's not much more than a regular sedan. And uh, it would be nice to have just a little bit more ability. But who knows? Maybe they'll come out with the Overland Mach-E someday. And, uh, or the electric Ford Bronco. There we go. That's, a, that's something I would hold out for. The electric Ford Bronco or Bronco Sport. Or maybe PHEV Ford Bronco or Ford Bronco Sport. Until then, though, you get this Maki, and I think this is a pretty good place to be. So let's show you guys some cruise control here. We'll set lane keep assist on here. It takes a minute for it to recognize sometimes, but then it keeps you very well centered. And of course, these I can't see them in person in real life, but these two blinking lights are basically monitoring my attention to the road and uh, seeing whether my eyes are straight ahead or off to the right or the left and that's kind of monitoring and managing whether to prompt me to put my hands back on the wheel. It won't change lanes automatically but if you put your certain turn signal on it will let you change lanes without any beeping or bonging or vibrations. 70 miles an hour wind noise is very low and uh, no tire noise very quiet this is a supremely comfortable highway cruiser. Uh, you're just going to eat through battery, though, on the highway. It's just the nature of electric cars. High speed does not uh, bode well for battery life. So we turn the propulsion sound back on and turn traction control off. Ooh, it's just it's just clumsy. It's it's not it's not a uh, it's not a fast infotainment. To use and I honestly after using it for three four days I just still don't know where everything is it, there's just random menus all over the place some menus that do the same thing are in two different spots or do similar things are in two different spots ambient lighting that's nice and also climate control if you're just gonna put everything in the same place down there all the time and leave it there why not just give us buttons and a volume knob and a tune knob? Uh, tuning through Sirius XM channels can be a little bit tedious sometimes. Oh yeah, propulsion sound again. I mean, the balance here is, is kind of the key. It's not doesn't have more outright grip than any other car on the market, but the balance is, is very nice. It still feels heavy. You can't hide 5,000 pounds. Here over these impacts, it's kind of loud over bumps. But yeah, I think, I think, I think we've said everything that needs to be said and that, that needs to be covered on this Mach-E. It is a very, very nice job from Ford. They, they did a really good job putting this car together and engineering it and uh, designing it and just, just, it's a good execution. So for their first full EV, 
Well done. Here we go. <laughs> you just, you can't beat the torque of an electric car. That's, that's where you win all the drag races, is from zero to 50. Okay, the propulsion sound is weird. Ooh, we just switched to night mode. That's exciting. I like how each drive mode has its own kind of graphical look. Whisper is kind of the eco mode. The throttle is quite different from engage or um, or unbridled engage is kind of just your normal day-to-day -day driving mode everything's very linear that's what i've been driving around in most of the time we trying to use regen for every braking scenario doesn't always work <laughs> you come in a little bit hot sometimes well, guys, that is the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E. I think anyone who buys this car is going to really enjoy it. If you want an EV, this is a really good option. If you want to wait, I can understand that too. You know, we're going to be getting more range, better charging network, better tech in these cars as time goes on. But, uh, you know, you're either an early adopter or you... You know, you want to wait around a bit. And I don't blame you either way. All right, guys, that'll sum things up on the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E. Stay tuned later this week. We're going to drag race this against a Tesla Model Y dual motor. Very curious to see how it'll do. And also, big thanks to our sponsor, Phantom Wallet. If you're interested in a new Phantom C, head on over to their Kickstarter campaign and get in on that while you can. All right, guys, that's the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Thanks for watching. It's been good to spend some more time behind the wheel of this and uh, just kind of give you guys an idea of what it's like to use using the Ford Pass app, all that stuff. I think that'll sum everything up on this car. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Drive safe out there. I am looking forward to the nicer weather here soon. We've got some fun stuff planned for you in the next few weeks. Look at this red exterior in the sunset. Just a beautiful, beautiful color. Probably how I would get a Mai Maki if I were in the market. <laughs>